Well, hello and welcome. My name's Julie McCrossan and I'm a head and neck cancer survivor treated in 2013. And this is a special interview for World Head and Neck Cancer Day 2025. And it's my enormous pleasure to welcome Youssef Ben Bushta, who's a medical physics researcher who's been involved with a project at the ImageX Institute at the University of Sydney called the Remove the Mask Project. Thank you so much for joining us for World Head and Neck Cancer Day, Yusef. Thank you for having me, Julie. I'm really uh, looking forward to talking to you about some of the work I've done. This Remove the Mask Project, and, and we'll show on screen me getting my mask fitted as a head and neck cancer patient and and lying on my radiation therapy machine, my LINAC, uh, being treated. And I fall into that category, I think roughly 50%, some new research indicates of patients who do find it really tough to wear that mask. What's been the fundamental purpose of this Remove the Mask project from the patient point of view? What's your message to patients watching this? I think the patient... uh, the message um, to start with is if you're experiencing mask anxiety, you're not alone. Um, a very, almost a majority of patients have some anxiety um, w- with the mask. Um, and there are ways to potentially help you if you're experiencing anxiety during your treatment. But anxiety is a bit of a quiet symptom or it can be a quiet symptom. So make sure that you speak up to your therapist, to your doctor, um, so they know that you're experiencing anxiety and they can help you with that. Um, I think that's the biggest message that I want to uh, patients to um, roll out. So it's good to speak up to your radiation therapists who are, uh, are, are helping you get into the position and are running the technology, or to your doctor, because there are options. Just in a nutshell, what are some of the things that the team can do to help you? Yes. So perhaps the most basic things that should be available to any patient in any center is getting some uh, external help. So that could be talking to a mental health professional um, or some medication to help you with your anxiety while you're being treated. There's also some really nice technologies that are starting to come up that are available in some of the centers. Um, One of them is a bit less restrictive mask. So you can do some cutout of the mask so it doesn't feel so uh, all-encompassing and it's easier to breathe and maybe it's not as uh, painful. Um, the other thing, and this is probably um, what most patients would be excited about, uh, but it's very novel, so it's not available everywhere, is something called SGRT, or Surface Guided Radiotherapy. Um, and this is a new technology that allows therapists to know where you are at all time when you're being treated. Um, and it's possible to um, to treat without the mask um, in a one-off type of setting. But again, this is very new, um, and it's something you should talk to your treatment team about um, if you're interested. Just before I I go into this uh, low-cost surface imaging system, this uh, surface-guided radiation therapy system that you've been working on with a team of people, and we'll put their names at the end of this video, and, and, and so people know your team members. But before we go to that, I just want to comment on that thing of reaching out because you could get a mental health professional because I know some of my fellow head and neck cancer patients, that word mental health, that can make them a little bit concerned. But there's a whole thing called psycho-oncology. So it's psychologists working with cancer patients and their families to help them cope emotionally. So uh, most clinical teams will have access to that if you explain you really, really need help. I, I just thought I'd say that. And and you mentioned the mask can be painful. You know, I had 33 sessions. I wouldn't, in the mask, I wouldn't call it painful, but it's sort of tight. <laughs> it needs to be tight because we yeah. often lose weight. So it is tight, but we can breathe. It's uh, it's just a bit tight and it gets a bit looser, I'm afraid, um, because we lose so much weight. But let's come yeah. to your this innovation, which I, is so exciting. It, it's all about, can you explain what the 
the fundamental innovation of this surface guided radiation therapy system is why does it make it possible yep. to safely not uh, not wear the mask it's going into clinical trial hasn't happened yet but we're on the cusp aren't we why is it safe what have you helped to create that makes it safe so i think the to to start answering that you have to start at the beginning of why do we need the mask in the first place um, and the answer to that is nowadays when we're treating with radiotherapy, we take some uh, images at the beginning to make sure that you're in the right, pl- that the patient is in the right place. Um, so that when they're being treated, we know exactly where we're treating and we can achieve millimeter accuracy. Basically, we can target only the cancer and save the healthy tissue. But what happens is we take an image at the beginning, right before the treatment. And then we assume that the patient isn't going to move when we're actually treating. Um, the mask makes sure that the patient doesn't move. Um, and so the treatment is safe because everything is kind of static and we can treat um, the exact area that we're targeting. If you remove the mask, there's the potential for motion to happen. Um, and I know like it's a bit, it, it might sound a bit silly because the patient might be like, well, I can just stay still and I'll be fine. But we're talking about millimeters. So if you look at the ruler, a millimeter is like the smallest nudge. It's very small. And what happens is even just trying to stay still, there will be a little bit of motion. Um, and that can be enough to to lead to uh, consequences. And so when it comes to the innovation, is surface-guided radiotherapy, or SGRT, allows the treatment team to monitor the patient throughout the treatment. So we still take that image at the beginning, but then we have a constant uh, monitoring of the patient and where they are so that if there is some motion, we can just stop the beam to make sure that we don't send radiation to, um, to healthy tissue. And could I, I just say, my understanding is, you know, you, I had tumours uh, right down at the back of my throat. I had oropharyngeal cancer. Uh, but I've seen those tumours because they send a little tube with a camera down your nose. and you, So I've seen what you were trying to treat and what, what you eliminated. Um, but you're f- fixing on that tumour with great precision. And even when we breathe, there is slight movement. So this surface guided radiotherapy system, it, you're tracking now, is it, I'm correct, in real time exactly where that tumour is. It's, that's the target, isn't it? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. One thing I'll say is the surface, um, a, as its name uh, implies, it tracks the surface, um, whereas the tumour is inside. Um, luckily, there's not many joints in the in the skull, um, and so if a part of the skull moves, kind of the whole head moves, which allows you to kind of use the surface as a um, we call that a surrogate, but it's basically um, something that moves the same way as the tumor. So you're not looking directly at the tumor, but you're looking at something that moves like the tumor. Amazing. I want you to imagine a a, 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 a senior high school student who's really interested in physics because your expertise is all about physics and indeed you're a medical physics researcher and I think plan to be a fully qualified medical physicist in the future. Why is this an exciting application of physics for you? That link between the technical challenges, intellectual challenges, but also the link to the human experience? Well, talking a little bit about myself, I started actually in particle astrophysics. So I was looking at neutrinos from the sun, something very far removed from the human experience. Um, And then when I started graduate school, I kind of wanted something that had a bit more application um, that maybe brought something to the world that contributed to people's life and just the general knowledge about the universe. And that's what draw me to medical physics. What the Remove the Mask uh, project taught me is 
when you're doing medical physics, it's about the patient. You're tr- yes, you know, if you can improve the dose and these little geometry things, that's great because it could translate to a better patient outcome. But at the end of the day, you also want the patient to, uh, to after their cancer journey, say, hey, I really had a great experience. Um, I really felt good. I felt understood. And I didn't have anxiety. It was, you know, it sucks to have cancer, but at least I felt very supported. Um, and like the challenges that I faced was, were addressed. And the remove the mask at its very core is about patient experience. It's about making the treatment more uh, palatable, more friendly to to people. Um, and that's something that I've learned is actually equally important as the little numbers that we worry about. That's so interesting because, as you'd know, and, and viewers to this for World Head and Neck Cancer Day would know many head and neck cancer patients who often have surgery, chemotherapy, as well as radiation therapy or proton therapy in some countries. Um, we do have what's called late effects uh, to varying degrees. And we tend to talk less commonly about the emotional or psychological impact. And that's really what Remove the Mask is about. It's that's right. trying to remove that potential trauma for some patients. Yeah. Time's almost up, but I know that you've you and your fellow team members have published a number of papers. Uh, You've given international and national presentations. It's fantastic, Yusef. Um, I I guess, just finally, how long do you think it will be before uh, we have real clinical trial experience so patients actually receive the treatment using this surface-guided radiation therapy approach to an alternative to the mask? And and potentially taken into normal clinical practice? What would be your hopes? Well, the good news is SGRT, or Surface Guided Radiotherapy, has been growing exponentially, the number of clinics who's, uh, who's adopted the technology. Right now, it's used, so I mentioned prior uh, open face mask. So it's used with open face mask. It's used for other treatment sites. It's not yet used for treatments without any masks at all. And the reason for that is as rigid as the head is, you can, you can still have facial expressions and things like that that can uh, lower the accuracy. And what the remove the mask uh, and what the surface imaging technology and algorithms that I've been working on, uh, what I was trying to do is improve that surface imaging technology, the, what's inside the computer. So not the cameras themselves, but what's inside the computer to make it so that we can safely image uh, patients um, without any mask at all. And so I think w- the technology is there. Now, the next step is making sure it works as we expect in the clinic and then translating it to a commercial product um, that you can actually, um, that, that any hospital can just purchase and, and have that available to them. Um, there's already been some, like, one-off treatments without the mask for patients who had very severe anxiety. Um, but in terms of having it routinely available, I think maybe in the next five years, it's very potent- uh, possible that, that would be there. That's fantastic. And I, I should uh, say, um, and as I say, we'll put team members' names uh, on the end of this video, but radiation oncologists, including uh, Puma Sundarayson, have been involved r- throughout. Uh, psycho-oncologists, including uh, Phyllis Buto and Harriana Dillon from the University of Sydney, have been involved. Patients like myself have been involved uh, and others. Uh, uh, and, of course, Professor Paul Keel, uh, the medical physicist. So there's there's a lot of people who've been working on this project and to make it safe as well as possible. Uh, I just want to just wish you well for your future career and just yeah. personally on behalf of head and neck cancer patients, uh, just thank you, and their families and friends, just say thank you so much for your passionate and detailed and intellectual contribution 
to this project, which has the capacity to indeed <laughs> improve the patient experience for head and neck cancer, which I think most clinicians agree is one of the toughest cancers. No good cancer, but it's a tough one because there's so much in the head, the brain and the, you know, the spinal column and let alone our teeth. <laughs> yes, there's so much that we're trying to avoid, um, for sure. I thank you so much for uh, for your well wishes and yes, there is the Remove the Mask team is a huge team and we work on many different approaches to to the same goal and it wouldn't be possible with the clinical partners like you mentioned, Dr. Puma Sundarasan, but also all the therapists who help us um, and provided advice um, on making the system user friendly. Um, so yeah, thank you. And uh, happy World Head and Neck Cancer Day. I, I always say that, Yusef, because even though cancer's tough, we're working all the time to improve survival and quality of life. So this is deaf sign clapping, so I clap you, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you.